Eddie, 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 you've been a thorn in my ass. You've been like a scratch in my Bentley. Eddie, get this through your skull. You used to be my best friend. You used to be my brother, but that's not the case anymore. I have a new brother. When I rip the title championship <laughs> off of your waist like flesh from bone, you will understand in that very moment that annihilation is the only solution. TikTok. In my ass. In my ass. In my ass. Let me talk to you. In my ass. So right now you listening to the cart, charisma, athleticism, and raw talent. And what you're really listening to is total non-stop impact. Don't you dare miss a lesson. Oh yeah. If it's good enough for Rich Swan, it's good enough for you. Welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans brought to you by the Impact Lounge, the number one source for Impact Wrestling news and discussion. My name is Trent, and I'm here alongside my co-host, Kyle. Kyle, say hello to the people. It's the fans of Impact. Dummy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, are we insulting the people right away? We just got oh, started. We're here. just having fun like we always do, Trent. But I guess don't we, you dare yeah. miss a listen. Don't you dare, Mister Listen. That's Rich Swan. Uh, he's a he's a fan of the show. He's a good guy, and he gave us a hell of an intro. That was cool. Rich, thank you very much for that once again. Uh, and that that entrance music you heard. Some people have been asking about the music, Kyle. I got I got to get a, give a plug here. That is my band, Hemi, HemiMusic.com, H E M I. Check us out, Facebook.com/slash Hemi. Give it a look. Don't you dare miss a listen on that. Uh, that song is called Revengeance. We'll have a link to Revengeance in the comments of this uh, of the YouTube version of this of this pod here. So take a look, take a look at that video. But yeah, if you like it, uh, you know maybe drop the ninety nine cents and buy it. I got bills too, Kyle. What do you think? I mean, you like that song, or you just patronizing me, telling me I'm good when I'm I'm not. Oh, I, I love Hemi, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm rocking out to the tunes, man. I, I, I'm digging it. You know, you rock the mic here on the podcast, and you got the metal band on the side. Pretty cool. But like cool. you said, Trent, uh, help out listeners, please. Loungers, uh, throw this guy a bone over here. Buy yeah. Trent uh, a, a can of baked beans for dinner. This guy's got to eat. He's starving. He's, uh, he's I mean, ramen noodles Trent, every night, you know? man. Help I mean, out. Eight, 18 cent bags of ramen noodles every night. I mean, wrestling and heavy <laughs> metal don't pay the bills, man. Oh, but, man. uh, but we'll check it out. Yeah, it's called Revengeance. Check it out. A lot of people have been – I really appreciate the feedback on the song. Thanks, guys. So, uh, cool. And, yeah, you can hear the whole thing on uh, HymieMusic.com. And uh, I'll have a link to uh, below here. Anyway, we are here, Kyle. We're going to be talking about Final Hour. That is uh, from November 8th, 2018, live from the Melrose Ballroom in Queens, New York. And uh, we're going to jump into it in a second. But for, before we do – we're going to read uh, some YouTube comments. That seems to be our thing from the loungers. So uh, you're ready? I love it. That's how we got to kick off the shows. Loungers, you leave your comments, and then next week, come back to hear them. We love reading them off. You, you can insult us. You could be nice to us, whatever. We're not going to hold back. We're going to read it all. I'm, uh, you know, basically, this is a big ego stroke for us, Kyle. I think it's, it's great. We're uh, getting our ego stroked here, which is nice. You know, I'm not, I'm not really complaining. All these, all these wonderful comments from people here. But, uh, Let's jump right in. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the list here. You know, I'm not going to take too much time, but I want to I shout some people out. Uh, Miguedro, which I believe was our first hater who became a liker. Miguedro said, love this. Thanks, guys. Miguedro, we're glad we got you, man. We're glad you're in for the ride, buddy. Thank you very much. Uh, who else we got here? We got, uh, let's see. Oh, Whoopsie, your boy Whoopsie. Long Island's very own is back. And uh, he oh, says. Uh, he comes around every week. Every week, and he just wanted you to know that he grew up in the brown part of Long Island in Nassau. So what you you know, hey, Whoopsie is is hip to the game, dude. Whoopsie's uh, avatar is also the cover of Iron Maiden's first album, so I'm gonna give him a shout for that. Uh, Whoopsie up the Irons, man. Up the Irons, they're on tour soon. By the way, they just announced that. Anyway, let's see. Uh, Irfan Iqbal, who was a, a guy who shouted out the music, he said your introduction music is better than Impact's current theme for the opening. Cool video, guys. Uh, I want Kevin Sullivan, Scott Demore, 
Ed Nornholm and Don Callis to take note of that comment, that my music is better than Impact's current music. And if you guys want to use Revengeance, you have every right to do it because, damn it, I, that's an ultimate mark out for me, Kyle. I would love to. I would love if that happened. Oh, good for you. <laughs> uh, Mark Ma- Mark Maracini says, "Love your show. Thank you, Mark." Hey, and I finally got one, Kyle. Kyle, I finally got one. The Chris Steele show made a comment and said, "I'm from Chicago, and I can confirm that Deep Dish is the goat." So there you go. I finally got a Deep Dish. Bullshit. Man, I gotta, Bullshit. I, gotta, I think no, that was you on no. the secret account, Trent. I'm going. I have an alias as the Chris Steele show. <laughs> no, that's my guy, man. Chris Steele, thank you very much. Let's hang out someday. Let's go have I'm a deep dish. I'm sticking to it. I'm sticking to it. Trent, Chris Steele, whoever. I don't care. Whoever. I'm hey. not interested in any sort of pizza that involves silverware. Just like our other guy said, it's a casserole. Nah. Okay, Chris, I'll meet you at Lou's, Giordano's, or Gino's, whatever whichever one's your favorite, buddy. I'll meet you over there. You, you name the time and place. Uh, and so you wouldn't know what that meant, Kyle, because uh, that, that's a deep dish trend. thing. I, I don't know how. It, it might take months. It might take years. We're going to have the pizza challenge. It's going to go down. We're going to do I, it. It needs to happen. It needs to happen. Uh, Distiller85 says, Kyle and Trent, you guys are my favorite YouTubers, and I think Kyle Cross should win the world title and have a long title run with a baby face Eli Drake eventually winning the belt. Yeah! But I would like to see it booked well and plenty of time and effort put into it. Yeah. Distiller, that is very humbling that we're your favorite YouTubers. Thank you very much, bud. That's awesome. That is. Yeah. Well, Distiller, dude. I think you need to uh, get a better uh, taste in your YouTube browsing of where your favorites. But hey, I'll take it. Well, we nah. appreciate it. I don't understand Distiller. I like I, I like good comments like that. And hey, he also followed it up with another comment that said, "Hey, BQ, good job letting these guys on the channel." Dummy. Yeah. Hey, you gonna doubt Distiller after that? Come on. You're a good. Uh, you're a good man, Distiller. We appreciate you. Appreciate that. Uh, Eddie Pellig- Peligro says, "Good show, guys. I agree with Trent about Jordan. Uh, don't get it. She's bland, and nothing about her makes me care. My suggestion for the Daisy Hit Squad finisher is the Kali Yuga. Uh, I'm not sure what the Kali Yuga is, but yeah, hey, good show. And he uh, agrees with me on Jordan Grace. Jury's out, man. I've seen her live a bunch of times. We'll see. I, well, we're gonna get into her debut in a little bit too. We'll talk about it." Uh, another one from Alliance Performance Ensemble says, fantastic review, guys. Thank you, bud. We appreciate that. Guys, this was a very interactive comment-filled uh, episode here. Thank you guys again for that. So we will, uh, we're will. we looking forward to this week's now. As you guys see, we respond to everything. We talk to you. Uh, definitely, we are going to also, just speaking of, this is on YouTube, by the way. Speaking of YouTube comments, we're gonna, we still have our channel up from before we joined the lounge. That's at... Um, that's a total nonstop impact. Just take a look at that. Uh, you can find us there. We're going to be putting some exclusive stuff that just goes on that channel. So subscribe on that channel. We're going to have some stuff that's not a part of the lounge. So just some extra content, bonus yeah. footage, that kind of uh, thing. we got to maintain the old YouTube because you gotta. If, if BQ ever kicks us out and throws us out on the streets, we're going to have to have something to fall back on. we got to keep paying the rent on the old place just in case he kicks us out, man. So. Uh, just in case. So, uh, Kyle, you need to keep that updated, my friend. Kyle's a te- Kyle is the tech guy. I'm the business guy. Kyle, you need to update that damn uh, YouTube page. With I, I got to get content. up on it. I got to get up on it. We, we finally have a nice, like, a little amount of stuff to put up on it, you know. Yeah. Uh, wait a couple weeks. But now we finally have, you know, we have a n- nice uh, couple uh, shows under our belt here on the Impact Lounge and many, many more to come. Hopefully. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, cool. So, yeah, man, we're going to jump in here. Uh, we want to talk about, the, again, like I mentioned, Final Hour, which was their uh, their last show after the Melrose Ballroom before they went on to Vegas. So this was a hell of a, a show to kick it off or to end the run with. Uh, real quick, before you guys, if you guys want to see some awesome photography from this show, uh, take a look at Scott Lesh. And his Instagram is Scott Lesh. Uh, it's L-E-S-H. Uh, 724, Scott Lesh 724. He took some amazing photos at this show. Uh, huge shout out to him. We use the couple on our Instagram page, which is We Talk Impact. Give us a follow there. We definitely borrowed some. We credited him. He was totally cool about it. So, Scott, thank you very much for letting us borrow. Uh, he's awesome. Take a look, guys. But anyway, hey, Kyle. So, uh, Big Boss BQ sent down, um, he sent down some rules, man, about the show. He he gave us some uh, he dictated some rules to us. 
You want to tell was a the memo. Thing? We got a, a memo. memo. Got a memo. You want to tell the people what the memo was? Because you got it. I didn't get this. I'm hearing about well, it now. Moving forward on the reviews, he wants us to open up the review with the main event. I was a little confused at first. Wasn't sure what he meant, but I, I get his vision now. He wants us to kick it off with the main event. So as soon as the review starts, we're kicking off the main event match, and then I guess we're going to go back back to the start of the show, and then we'll brush up on the main event again, obviously, in its you know regular order, its regular placement. But we're going to be opening up the shows with the main event because it's all about the main event, right, Trent? Well, this one particularly was all about the main event for sure. Uh, BQ is a visionary. We're going to go with his uh, his new style here because hey, he's he's the man here. This is his channel. We're gonna we're uh, we're uh, we're part of the team. We're gonna do what he what he's suggesting and, and see how the fans respond to it. Let us know what you guys think about this order. We want We're feedback his on it. Bitches. Nah, hey, hey, speak for yourself, pal. <laughs> speak for yourself. Uh, let us know what you guys think about doing it this way, where we kick it off with the main event and then we later on go into the rest and then we'll deep dive into the main event uh, a little more further analysis at the end. So uh, let's kick it off, man. Let's get to it, Kyle. Johnny Impact versus Killer Cross. For the world title, this was huge. The buildup was huge for this show. This this is one of my favorite builds. I wish it was longer. I've said that a couple episodes. I wish it was done longer. Maybe get him get it even over to Vegas. But uh, what a what a I mean before we even get to the match, what about that build up to it? What do you think? Fantastic, fantastic, and not so much just what they did. You really have to credit the production team because. Because the presentation and the production every week is very key to what's just keeping me glued to Impact's TV show every week. Uh, like, I love Killer Cross and I love Johnny Impact. But I know for a fact I wouldn't be so hooked into the Killer Cross character and what he's doing, his matches, if it wasn't for the way the production team is presenting him in the promos. And just the overall look and just atmosphere. It's awesome. That is uh, all credit to Kevin Sullivan, uh, producer Kevin Sullivan, K Sully TV, I believe is his uh, his Twitter handle. That team is incredible. I think they they still do it out of Nashville, out of that big production facility in Nashville. What an amazing group of people involved there, man. That uh, that you're right though. The promos, I was I was hook, line, and sinker with the promos and and the and the video and the quality and the style. That got me, man. So before these two even locked up, I was I was all into this. So that was that was impressive. But uh hell of a match, a lot of back and forth. It's the first time I think Kyle, first time they showed Cross have any sort of vulnerability. I don't know if you caught that or not, but it was like for the first time, like you know, Johnny hit him with a bunch of shit and he was he was beaten down. He was he was back and forth. And it's the first time I saw him kind of have to sell. He had no choice but to sell and and be beat up and sore. And, and I was like, oh man, like you know, they they they, they they showed a little vulnerability of the character for the first time. Uh, I don't know. I mean, obviously, you can't have him. He's not like the Undertaker, right? He can't just be not affected by anything. But uh, you know, what do you what do you think about that? I mean, do you think it was another level of the character? Do you think it was kind of like you needed to kind of start showing? That, you know, if, given the right opponent, you know, he is going to have a challenge because he's been dominating everybody else. What do you think? You hit it. You hit it right on the head there, Trent. Uh, it's he's not an undertaker. He's not that type of character. Uh, we needed this. Uh, it's very, very essential to his progression. Uh, it was interesting seeing him react to things, just, just like you said, uh, it's very interesting to see him, uh, you know, have to sell some of these moves. And uh, I haven't seen too much of his work outside of Impact. Uh, I'll be honest, I haven't seen any of his work outside of Impact. So Yeah, uh, me either. I, I've only, you know, watched his career so far, what he's done right here in Impact Wrestling. And uh, very interesting, man. Uh, it was a hell of a match. But like you said, uh, it was cool because uh, it just added another layer to the character. We saw him in a few situations that we've never seen him before. Yeah, which was interesting to see that it was a, uh, it was a great back and forth match. I I think it was, it was a lot of it was long. I think the match went. I don't have an exact time, but I'm I'm guessing almost it was about fifteen to twenty minutes total on this match, and it was uh, it was good, man. It 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 really kept me hooked because I didn't I don't read spoilers, 
I don't read any of that shit on purpose. I actually got into a fight with somebody on Twitter today about posting spoilers because some guy was posting from uh, from Vegas. I go, this is a prick thing to do is ruin a show that people bust their ass on, but that's besides the point. But uh, I didn't know where it was going. I, I was purely going and raw on this, and I'm like, all right, maybe he's going to win this because it was so much back and forth. But uh, at the end, man, uh, there was, you know, there was there was straight jacket chokes and power gut wrench power bombs. There was a lot of hard hitting. It, it was stiff. I got to say it was a stiff match. Uh, super kicks, knockout kicks, super kicks. He, Cross kept coming back. He goozled impact in the corner at, at one point towards the end. But then uh, Johnny just hit him with the Frankensteiner in that corner. Got him down, Starship Pain. Finally took him for the one, two, three. I didn't see that coming, man. I thought I thought they're gonna give it the cross and he's gonna roll into Vegas as champion. What'd you think about? It? Did you think it would have been too soon? Well, you know what, Trent? If Killer Cross did win, somebody would have put the spoilers in our faces no matter what. Like I going into this match, I didn't read any spoilers, but I just knew in the back of my head if if Killer Cross did win this match, I I would have heard about it. Some some assholes would have put pictures of it all over Twitter because that's what they do. And so I figured it's not going to go Killer Cross's way, but I was very intrigued to see how it was going to play out at the end. Um, yeah, I had a feeling going into this match, Trent, that Moose and Killer Cross probably we're going to stop being friends as a result of the match. Like that's what I thought in my head coming down to it. I thought, okay, Johnny impact is definitely going to win this match. I don't think it's going to be clean. And I don't see moose and killer cross leaving this set of tapings as friends still. In fact, I, I I'm surprised they're they're still friends to this point. I, I think their relationship probably should have split off when Austin Aries hit the road, because when you look at the character of killer cross, he has no reason to be friends with anybody. And Don Callis totally uh, made that clear when Moose was ejected out of the match by the referee. Did you hear Don Callis on commentary how he yeah. said exactly what I just said, that yeah. Killer Cross has no reason to be friends with anybody. He's a sociopath. Yeah, it's true. He, and you know what's funny, Kyle? I caught that. He mentioned the word sociopath. And that's something that they have never said before, I don't think, until... You and I started saying it on this uh, on this show here, man. We, we're still convinced somebody's listening to our show. I'm still convinced about that. Well, I mean, telling it like it is. Just look at Killer Cross. That's not even something. I think you're reaching a little there. But look at Killer Cross. <laughs> There's no reason for him to be friends with Moose or Austin Aries. He doesn't need anybody. True. That's maybe the, he I, had to get his foot in the door into the company or something. You know, maybe he had to you know buddy up a little bit uh, just to you know get in but let's face it he doesn't need any friends he's never gonna have any friends i agree i think maybe that this might have been a this might have been your transition out you know what i mean uh cross is main eventing now moose getting kicked out moose is tied up with his own thing i think i think this this could be the there's no feud transition out but it's kind of like hey you know we'll, we'll do our own thing i mean Mo- dude one of my one of my notes i had here to talk about later on was moose's theme song yells i'm on my own i think you pointed this out to me and i'm like dude he's not on his own he gets it, the theme song is literally saying i'm on my own i'm on my own i'm like you're rolling with killer cross you're not on your own man so we'll get to that anyway but uh cool man so yeah johnny impact retains still your champ going into vegas i'm okay with it you know it's uh, i'm not a huge fan of johnny's he's he's a he's a good great performer um but i'm i'm the character doesn't doesn't hit me, you know, quite as strongly. He's not the greatest on the mic. I feel like they need a they need a much more a bigger presence. But Johnny's on Survivor right now, so I think that's a big big part of it. But uh, all right, man. So now we're gonna kick it back. We're gonna, we're gonna go right to the beginning of the show, and we'll get back to the main event with a little more deep dive at the end. But uh, we're gonna go right to the beginning of the show, Kyle. We kick it off with uh, well, first there's an amazing cold open by Kevin Sullivan and his team again fantastic that opening is is great and uh opening match ogs hernandez and homicide taking on the lucha bros uh pentagon and phoenix well hold on a second that's right time out before we get into the match i have to bring it up i have to address it Uh it upsets me a little to see their names here on our little show prep sheet and I, I can't not mention it, man. We have to address this. Um, 
There's rumors going around that this very well could be the end of the OGs in Impact Wrestling. A lot of people online are saying that the OGs are done. Their run is over. They were used in this program, this storyline, whatever you want to call it, and they were not brought to Vegas. Now, Trent, that that boggles my mind. Uh, A lot of people were bitching about it online. I saw uh, it was noted that Mike Johnson of PW Insider, he was somebody on his show that was bitching about it, and his words made a lot of headlines today. Uh, Now, I'm thinking, Trent, Homicide Hernandez, those guys are veteran alumni. You could use them in doses. You know, exactly. you got to keep the roster spots, you know, young, fresh. Keep the veterans in doses and use them in cycles for certain things. Like, I get that. I get not using Homicide and Hernandez constantly, although it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world because they, they are – a classic TNA draw. They are veterans of the company, but I get using them in cycles and doses, but looking at a guy like Eddie Kingston, Trent, there's no reason why Eddie Kingston shouldn't get signed by impact wrestling. Kingston is my one is the guy, one guy I think needs to stay. I hope they can find some place for him. I, whether it be know, serious or comedy, he could do anything. Or there's commentary. no reason why that guy should be sent home. Put Kingston on commentary, man. That guy is fantastic. He's what he displayed in acting as a manager uh, out outdid his wrestling ability. I think King, Eddie Kingston's fantastic. The OGs thing, you know, like you know, like you said, they were brought in for a purpose. They were brought in for this feud. You, they had their run, man. The OGs' time is is gone. They uh, weren't supposed to walk away from that angle shining. It was to put over LAX. It was to put over Ortiz and Santana. I get all that. Like I said. Hernandez homicide, I get phasing them out, bringing that, bringing them back in, maybe later on for something else. I get that, but Kingston should be an asset to the company. Every time Eddie Kingston is on camera speaking, he just cuts the most compelling promos. Everything they've given him in creative this year, he's taken and made the most out of and knocked out of the park. I just can't understand why they wouldn't sign the guy unless it's a personal thing that we don't know about, you know, behind the scenes. And I don't want to, you know, make any judgment or assumption. I'm just saying it's fucking weird that the company wouldn't sign the guy. It is weird to me, man. I can't I can't really figure it out. I don't know. Oh, well, impact uh, if you are listening, you guys fucked up. If not Kingston gonna give it, the dummy the week. I'm not gonna give dummy the week no, this early no, in the show. Not for this. But you guys fucked up and you know what? This is very early on. You know, who knows what the future holds? But I am hoping that Kingston can find his way back into Impact Wrestling because he's a tremendous talent. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, hey, we're here's open, man. One thing I had uh, on my notes here, Kyle, was one thing I feel like they, they did not do during this feud. They didn't really sell the OG's history to kind of show who they are. I feel like they got all that footage and they came in. And they assume we would know who they are. I mean, I know. we, You know. I mean, we watched uh, TNA and stuff. We watched their original run. But if you're a new guy. Building up. Impact. I think building up the first main event against LAX, I think they did a good job. I remember specifically a really cool promo package showing they? old LAX. Yeah. But that was a one-time shot. They didn't, you know, consistently I, present it that way. I That's feel they should have done, done it more. They should have really, like push that whole like you know we held the tag belts this many times when you guys were just wiping your noses in grade school and this and that. i mean they should have really pushed remind everybody that hey during this feud there was a reason they were pushing for that position of hey we're the we're the true ogs because we had, we were here doing the thing when you weren't that kind of thing but I, I don't know i feel like they didn't do it enough that's just a little complaint i had but another little another little complaint i had and this is very very minor uh there might be one more person who agrees who might have caught this? And if you you are that person, I want you to leave a comment. When they uh, when the ring announcer introduced Penta and Phoenix, uh, he announced them as he's like the Lucha Bros, and I'm like, the fuck Lucha, it's like it, I don't know, I, it bothered me. Call them Lucha Brothers. That's what they are. Lucha Bros doesn't sound right to me. I've been reading My, them uh, as the Lucha Bros, like written online and stuff as their you're name. You're not the commentator. You're not the. You're not the ring announcer. 
Know yeah, but not, not not actually spoken like that. You don't say no. the Lucha Bros. It's Lucha he's Brothers. Like, he's like the Lucha Bros. Like, oh, I Lucha kind of Bros. picture a bunch of Luchadors coming out with like Robbie E haircuts, like yeah. bro, man. You know, like, boom, 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 yeah. you know, fist bumping bro, and all that. Bros, got, bros has a has a has a connotation to it now. You can't put them in that bros category. But that, very minor thing. If anybody else caught that, please tell me. Make sure, tell me that I'm not the psychopath for picking on little shit like that but uh but yeah man great match uh homicide started off with trying to uh, stab pentagon with a fork but the referee pried it out of his hand so homicide went right for that uh the foreign object which he's great at because he hides in his boot uh he legit hides something in his boot i I, i've had him at aw and uh dude definitely has weapons in, in his boots he is an old school wrestler man i think he legit does it in case some some Mark tries to hurt him. He's got a freaking spike and a fork going on. Love how he always goes for the fork like Abdullah the Butcher style. Always, he's the old school. He, it, you ever see? You ever see a homicide up close? He's he's got the scar tissue, man. He's he's taking some cuts to the to the forehead. But grizzled uh, veteran, grizzled vet, man, grizzled vet. Uh, very. This was your classic um, Lucha Brothers match. They're flying all over the place. This was actually a great. Um, a lot of action in this match, Kyle. I mean, Phoenix with springboards, Pentagon uh, back and forth with a couple springboards himself. Hernandez hits a huge – Hernandez took that huge dive over the top rope. I mean, I, I think it's pretty awesome that he could still pull that off, man, that he does that that full full run run of the ring and just takes that 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 no-touch dive over the top rope. Dude, he, that guy's 300-something pounds, man. He's, I mean, imagine that guy flying into you. That was awesome. It, it is especially scary since, like – you see how tight that uh, guardrail is to the ring. There really isn't a lot of room to dive. And every time somebody does jump through those ropes, I'm scared. I'm scared they're going to bounce over the guardrail and hit somebody in the front row. Especially a guy the size of uh, Supermex, Hernandez. Oh, you dude. could easily take out six wrestling fans. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a, big, he's a big dude. But uh, a lot of back and forth. King tossed a slapjack over to Homicide at one point, but Phoenix super kicked him. And then uh, Phoenix took King out on the apron. And the Lucha Bros hit like a double team maneuver and pinned uh, pinned Hernandez. It's a cool little double team thing. Had a little sunsetty flip type of roll through pin deal. No, no, <laughs> no explanation, no name for it, but it sure was cool. It was cool. It, it was a uh, sunset flip power bomb plancha. You want, I don't know what the hell you want to call it, but it was cool. It was <laughs> Phoenix cool. pins on, Phoenix pins homicide with or, uh, Hernandez with that. Sorry, but uh, yeah, man, we go from that. Over about, we go backstage. Conan's congratulating the Lucha Bros on their victory. LAX walk up from behind him. They high five each other. Hey, what's going on? Congratulations, blah, blah, blah. And then Conan tells LAX he was inviting Penta and Phoenix to their victory party over the OGs. And LAX is kind of confused. And he goes, uh, they go, Conan, that was a month ago. Conan's like, and we got a month to go. And it was kind of weird. It was like, it was really awkward. Everybody kind of walked off puzzled. Or the LAX walked off puzzled. I didn't know what the hell any of that shit meant. And I was like, what the hell is he talking about? But uh, maybe a Conan turn? I don't, I don't know, man. Maybe turning a Penta and Phoenix heel? I, I don't know. I don't know. Just putting that out there, man. What do you think, Kyle? I don't know, man. We'll see. Uh, it was totally weird, though. Something fishy was going on. Something fishy was in the air. Loungers, you got any theories on what this was? Because th- it was a weird encounter. Clearly, it's leading to something, though. So if you guys got any theories on what this means, I'd love to hear it because I'm I'm puzzled on this one. I don't even know where you could go with this. But uh, all right, man, we go from that to uh, the debut of Jordan Grace. They've been hyping her up for a bit, man. Jordan Grace comes in, and she's going to take out Katarina. Perfect first opponent, Kyle, I think. you know They're not really doing much with Katarina right now. Katarina is a perfect uh, – she can work. She looks like a million dollars, and – why not? You know, she's she's uh, she's skinnier. She's smaller. She's tall though, but she's not as muscular as uh, as Jordan. So good good first opponent to have to kind of like display her her ability. But uh, it wasn't a long match. I noticed Don Callis did compare Jordan Grace to Rhino in ECW. Great comparison though. I don't know if uh, I don't know how she feels being a girl being compared to Rhino. But and that's uh, not the only thing Don Callis said. Uh, I, I know I, I should oh, yeah. start off with a comment <laughs> about the match itself, but I can't help myself because 
Don Callis is so goddamn funny. Uh, he, during great. the match there, uh, Josh was <laughs> plugging the movie Speed, starring Keanu Reeves. It was going to air later on Pop, and uh, Don <laughs> calls Keanu so hot and says, uh, I heard he takes his shirt off. And then he asked Josh if they could watch the movie together. God, I love Don Callis. Side note, I don't think Keanu Reeves takes his shirt off in Speed once. I'm going to put that out there. I've seen Speed. Of, uh, you uh, would know. You would know. Listen, I'll tell you how I know. All right, if there's anybody in their in their mid to late 30s listening to this, back in the day, Kyle, back in the day, in the 90s, Speed, Speed came out, and I want to say 94, and um, McDonald's was selling VHS movies for like four bucks if you bought a value meal. And Speed was one of them. And I remember, of course, I had to buy it because I saw it in the theater and I loved it. And, you know, Keanu Reeves was Ted from Bill and Ted, so I was immediately a fan. And um, we bought Speed, and I watched it, I don't know, 2,000 times, and I don't think he took his shirt off in that movie. But but uh, I would watch that movie with Don Callis for sure. I would like to. <laughs> uh, good back and forth match. Um, you know, Katarina got some cool offense. She, I, there was a cool move Katarina hit, which was the um, – she, she did one of those, like, through the rope – uh, like from the outside, from the apron to the inside DDT, which is pretty cool. And uh, but no, no, cho- no, uh, no chance against G- Jordan Grace's bear hug. She had a tap out win for her uh, for her debut. I'm not big on a, on a submission win for a debut. I feel like it's elo anticlimactic because we don't. We're just seeing. That's the first time we're seeing what her submission move is, and it's like, eh, you know, it, it really. We didn't think that'd be it because nobody ever taps out to a bear hug nowadays. But my one critique, oh, I, I noticed something. It was uh, her music is pretty, pretty grandiose and epic, and she walked out pretty fast to it. And I know she's like got that, and you know, she's she's what is, what does she call herself? Thick Mama Pump, right? And she's she's kind of like intense and looking to get into it, get into the fight, but. Uh, I think she should have taken her time a little bit, let people soak her in a little bit because it's her first time. She's a, it's a debut. So like, let people kind of see you. And, but she kind of, you know, power walked to the ring and got right in there. I'm like, yeah, I, I get, I get where she's coming from. But at the same time, let me see who you are. Let me, let me soak it in a little bit. Come a little more methodically. Uh, I don't know. Am I, am I crazy for that? Kyle? What do you think? I mean, am I, is that too much of a critique? No, you uh, you're, you're a bit of a stickler, but I, 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 I appreciate your, uh, your input, your insight. Um, me personally, I don't mind the bear hug as long as they keep up with it. I'd like to see her uh, make, you know, short work of her opponents moving forward with the bear hug. You know, have her in squash matches and whatnot, you know. I like to, you know, start off uh, one of those bigger type talents uh with the hey actually you know now that i'm saying it like that it is kind of hokey i guess you could try different things but it works it's a good way to establish your monster you know i think so i mean it's uh it's one of those things where uh i think like a female samoa joe a female taz you know yeah you know something to like like let, let me let me get to know you a little bit first you know before you start just submitting people out but um well, yeah, not bad. I mean, good debut. People took to her pretty well. I think she's wrestled in New York before. I think she was on that Joey Janela show in the same building. So people, I think people knew who she was. Uh, but she's had a lot of hype since All In. Uh, like I said, I, I've never been a big fan of hers. I've seen her a bunch. We had her at AEW early in her career. And I believe the one thing that still gets talked about is a missed spot during a main event. I think Eddie Kingston was in the main event against Silas Young. She missed the spot. Fuck the match. I, I vaguely recall this. I was I was I wasn't working for the company at the time, but that's how I remember Jordan Grace. I think it still gets mentioned every now and then. But uh, she was young at the time, though, man. She was this is early in the career. I think you're kind of being a dick to Jordan Grace, man. Yeah, I am. I really am, man. No, and you I'm... are, because I mean, I noticed the past <laughs> few episodes when her name comes up, you're instantly, you know, putting her down. I, did something happen between you and Jordan Grace, Trent, that you're not telling me about? Right, I'm, I'm level- sensing I'm sensing something here. I'm gonna level with you, Kyle. I asked her to prom and she turned me down. And, I know uh, it. I know I've been, it. I've been sour ever since then. <laughs> you went up to her and you sang some of those uh Cha Cha Gama sing songs and it didn't work. Yeah. She, she didn't I fall t- for him. I took her hand and I, I cha cha gama her with uh 
with the cubby cubby, you know, like that he did to Scarlet, but uh, she didn't take to it. She kind of punched me in the mouth and walked off. But uh, that's besides well, that's, that's well, story. to be honest, Trent, in spite of you, I'm rooting for Jordan Grace. This is just her first spot here on Impact TV. Let's give her a few weeks of TV to win you over and prove herself. And in spite of you, my man, I am rooting for Jordan Grace. Number one Jordan Grace fan right here. Actually, you know what? Let me, let me pull up her pro wrestling tees. I'm about to buy one of her T-shirts. Jesus. Jesus. Uh, let's, let, let, let's, let's, not, let's not start... Uh... You know, geez, let's let's start, start you know greasing the wheel over here, man. Come on, <laughs> this is just one match so far. Relax. Let, let's let's get a, like you said, let's get a couple match. Let's see how she does in Vegas before we start buying T-shirts, Kyle. All right, hey. judge her off of Vegas because I think you were kind of being a dick and she barely got to do anything. Let exactly. let her do what she does in Vegas, and then we'll come back around and then see what Trent's opinion of Jordan Grace and Impact is. I'm in the minority right now. I know she's hot right now. People are really into Jordan. I just, I, I need a little more, man. I need a little more. I know. Here's the, I'll give, I'm going to give her this though. She busts her ass. This is a hardworking girl. I see that those, those things in the gym. She is a hard work. I just want to, I want to know more about who Jordan Grace is. Give me more character. Uh, I need more levels. She, and that's on her. I think she's got to show a little more, more personality. She can't just be, I'm a strong chick. I gotta, you know, I want to see more of who this person is. But hey, that doesn't fair enough. I'll give her through Vegas. I'm, I'll be fair, man. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be a total dick. But uh, how about this, Kyle? If she, if she wins me over in Vegas, if she wins me over in Vegas, and if I eat my words, I'll buy you a Jordan Grace T-shirt. That's what I'm talking about, yeah, baby. Right. I'll order you a goddamn T-shirt from that stupid, fucking goddamn. All right, I'll order you a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you're from Chicago. Now you're insulting pro wrestling tees. <laughs> no. You know what? I figured it out, Trent. You are just a bitter, salty man from just living as a TNA fan for so long. Oh. You're bitter at the rest of the wrestling world. Come on. No. Oh. Oh. I'm just I'm just saying I'm 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 sour since Killer Cross didn't win the belt, but I'm 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 real sour. No, hey, you're pro wrestling tees, man. What a what an amazing um what an amazing it's right here in Chicago, right? You know, my own my beef with pro wrestling tees. Their hours are terrible. They have they have like a retail store now that's attached to the like the print shop. Terrible. They close at like six o'clock. I'm like, dude, people work till like six o'clock. When am I supposed to get over there? Like, how am I supposed to get to the store if I ever want to buy anything? But that's why it's a website. Yeah. You know, let's, uh, what's the point of having the store? You're open like during the day. I'm I'm at work during the day. Give me a break. I need a couple of nights a week where you're open late. Wait, but, there's uh, an actual store you can go to and buy these wrestling shirts. Yeah. So what they did was. Uh, uh, they attached it to their like their shop, their print shop where they make everything in their office and everything. They actually opened up a um, open a retail retail store which carries a lot of the, the hot sellers. Here's a really cool part about it. I will say this is awesome. If there's something on the site that you like, they can print it while you wait in the back. They'll print it for you, and you can wait, hang out in the store until they print it, and they'll bring you it hot off the press. That's pretty damn cool. So instant, it's like, it's like fast food. It's like, it's like fast food t-shirts. I know I'll be getting my Jordan Grace shirt hot off the press. All right. Man, listen, let's see if she does, she does in Vegas, my friend. Move uh, along, Trent. Moving along. Yeah, we spent a lot of time on that. We're <laughs> moving along. Brian Cage is, is driving through the mean streets of Ohio and Dayton to the Rockstar Arena, where OVE has a bunch of their damn flunkies waiting outside for him. He plows through all of them. Dave Crisp was amongst this, I believe. <laughs> I believe he was outside. And uh, he destroys them. He goes, where's Sammy? He's looking for Sammy Callahan. He come back from the commercial. He's on the inside. And you know, what's funny is interesting. They're they're in Dayton. They're in OVE territory. And he's Cage is getting booed out of the building, man. The hometown guys are are all over uh, on the, in this place. But uh, he... Calls out Sammy, says, hey, I'm here. Bring his ass out so he can kick it. He, he has the X Division title on, pulls it off, says, here we go. Ring the bell, and we got a match. Sammy Callahan comes out. Cage flattens him as soon as he gets in. Sammy, Sammy dumps Cage to the apron, knocks him on the floor, springboard lariats, back and forth, beating the shit out of each other. And um, he, you know, Cage gets Sammy, picks him up, tosses him over the rail into the fans. Sammy comes back. A lot of back and forth. It was a pretty intense match. Uh, Cage had it with he had the drill claw ready to roll, but from the Chris 
uh, rushed the ring, caused the DQ, and uh, Cage starts beating the shit out of both of them. These German suplexes, both Christs, and then all the local guys run in, man, and they start getting beat by Cage. But then finally it was too much, man. It was too much for Brian Cage, uh, even though he's a machine. He couldn't handle. He couldn't take them all, man. What do you think? Those damn Ohio meth minions. Uh, yeah, dude, it's a cult. It's the killer cult, man. That's what they call them. They're the killer cult. But, uh, dude, it reminded me of the of the kill scene in RoboCop. I don't know if you've seen the original RoboCop from '87, but that's what it looked like. They, it was all these guys killing one guy. They were just beating this one dude down, poor bastard, and uh, just tearing them apart. I, I just cool. love that scene of, you know, all of the wrestlers attached to all of Brian Cage's limbs. Yeah, what a great a cool, visual. That photo that got put out was badass. That was really Amazing. cool. Um, Sammy hit him with a pile driver. They hold up the title belt, you know, and he's standing over him victorious. I, I noticed amongst the amongst the uh, the cohorts there, you had uh, Trey Miguel and Ace Austin who have who wrestled on the Canada tapings and who are regulars, or Trey Miguel is at least for... Um, for AEW, so he's a great dude, man. I, and I believe I saw a photo um, that these guys all posted. The Rascals, which was uh, Trey Miguel, Desmond Xavier, and Zach Wentz are on the Vegas tapings. They were, they put a photo up together at the show. So these guys are going to be on the show. I thought I think you that's know great. What? It's funny you say that, Trent, and I'm not opening up a tangent here. It's just something funny that popped in my mind. Uh, when I'm watching this clip here of all these guys in the ring attacking Brian Cage, See, I don't know too much about the Rascals. I'll be honest, never heard of them. I guess that's just a, a scene of independent wrestling that I haven't come across yet. I, I haven't seen them. I haven't seen the Rascals. And uh, I just see the Rascals t-shirt, and I really thought one of these wrestlers was wearing a little Rascals t-shirt. I thought he was <laughs> repping Spanky, Alfalfa, and that crew. I, I did not know it was a parody shirt, uh, you know, advertising a professional wrestling stable. Learn something new every day. I thought they were repping Alfalfa. Well, you have seen the Rascals. I mean, you know Desmond Xavier's been on Impact for a bit. And then uh, Zach Wentz had a two, three, four matches, I think. And then uh, Trey Miguel had about two matches. Yeah, so you've seen them in, in, you know, in passing, you could say. Not as a unit. Not as a unit, but uh, but they're maybe bringing them in as a unit. That's pretty cool. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, man. They're they're a damn good team. They've been tearing it up in Japan and stuff. The Rascals are fantastic. So if they're if they're teamed on Vegas, uh, be ready for that, dude. You're gonna love you're gonna love what you see. I'm big fans of these guys and they're great dudes. Uh, but yeah, man, Brian Cage is still a monster. That that I mean, he was plowing through people like it was like it was uh, like he was a pair of scissors in a paper factory. <laughs> I just came up with that. But uh, dude, he was killing him until it was too much for him. But uh, I don't know, man. What do you think? Sammy and, and Cage, this is it. I think it's next uh, in Vegas. This is it. They're having a formal match now at, at the Impact tapings for that title. Where do you see uh, Where do you see that going, Kyle? What's your prediction? I, I need mean, predictions. Clear as day to me. Sammy Callahan is getting that belt. I don't care. I don't care how he's going to have to do it. He's going to have to bring his minions to Vegas. He's going to have to pack all those meth minions in a van or something. I don't know. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I see Sammy Callahan with gold in his future. I think so, and I think it's the right time to do it. I think it's uh, Sammy is ready. Sammy is your future future leader of that locker room, if he's not already almost, you know. So I think it's uh, I think it's it's great. It's about time to do it, and uh, he's going to have to do some dirty shit to get it, though. He's, he's yeah, not going to yeah. get it cleanly. Uh, Brian Cage is unstoppable. Right, and that's the thing. So it's got to be done right to keep Cage strong. You got to keep Cage strong right now. He's uh again another another future guy in the company. Got to keep him super strong. Uh, all right, man. So we go from that to Taya Valkyrie. A little promo on her. Taya calls uh Tessa Blanchard a coward after she got herself intentionally disqualified to retain the Knockouts Championship last week, and then Taya challenges the champ to another match. What will her what will her answer be? I don't know. I I don't know, man. Do you want to see another match between Taya and Tessa? I, I want to ask the the loungers too. Do you guys want to see another match between these two? Is it is it is it worth it? And the matches have been good. Don't get me wrong; they've been fantastic, actually. But is it worth another match, or should they move it on? What do you think, Kyle? I don't know. 
it's different. I don't think I've ever seen this before. And we don't get to say that in wrestling very often, but it's it's different. I, I mean, you could look at that as a good thing or a bad thing because it's unpredictable, but never have you witnessed somebody get two chances, blow them both, and then come back for a third title shot? That doesn't happen, Trent. I thought it was a little weird, man. I'm like, well, I mean, we already you already lost twice. And it's like, well, you, why would why would the champion keep giving her shots? I think you need a good story on why. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna I'm gonna need a good reason why Why does Ty deserve another shot? Right. Yeah, I agree. Like I'm gonna need a, if Tesla gives it to her, I'm gonna need a good reason why she's giving it to her. If there, if it's just like, yeah, okay, you can have a match, it's bullshit. That's that's bullshit. I don't want to see it. No, no champion would do that. the 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 idea should be: I already beat you twice. I don't need to prove anything. So they need a good answer. They need a good reason to go back to it. We'll see. I got a feeling. Obviously, it's going to happen. But yeah, I need it. Let's see what the reason is. But uh, here we go. So we go from that, Kyle, to the GWN flashback of the week. It's a match I saw back in uh, in two thousand eight. It was a Motor City Machine Guns versus Masato Yoshino and Naruki Doi. And, uh, dude, what a good match. It was kind of cool to see that again. I You tend to forget how amazing the Machine Guns were. Uh, did, did you, you were watching around this time, right? You were seeing all this stuff? 2008, I was still watching. I was about to take my sabbatical, but yes, 2008, I was still watching. So oh, I, I, I do recall. Was there, there was a sabbatical? You had a sabbatical? Oh yeah, dude! I, I got oh, in high school and started bar. partying and getting messed up a lot. I stopped watching wrestling. How long? How long does this last? Really? I, you know, it's funny, dude. Like I was, I'd say maybe f- for as long as I can remember. Probably like you know, a little kid like most, age four or five, got into it at a young age. Lived wrestling up until about, eh, I'd say about somewhere in ninth grade. You know, I started, you know getting a little more interested in girls and partying and, you know, that, that sort of thing. I, I got away from wrestling a little. And it's not that I thought I was too good for wrestling. It's just it was at that time when, like, I don't know, WWE was doing the thing with Donald Trump. TNA, I, TNA started getting a little funny about uh, it. Just wrestling was at a bad time. There, You had ECW on sci-fi. Like, for some reason that year, I just really got burned out on wrestling. I was disappointed all across the board, and I, I took my sabbatical. I left wrestling for a while, and then I came back, Trent, and I came back to Impact Wrestling, and, uh, you know, strong ever since. Fair enough. Fair enough, man. I, on the other hand, never left Impact, so... Uh, never left. I, I, you know, never probably, left. Probably never left. I'm a, I'm, I'm a great guy. I'm a great goddamn fan. I'm just... Still can't get a goddamn retweet from them or anything, but hey, that's besides the point. Look at me. Look at me, Impact. What about me? What about Trent? If they Trent, if they saw your merchandise collection and your DVD collection, you wouldn't be getting a retweet. You would be getting sent to therapy. They pay. They pay for that. <laughs> All Impact right, fair, rehab. Fair enough. I I want to know from the fan from the loungers here. You guys want to see a picture of my Impact DVD collection because I got every one of them. Every one, and he's got okay. another DVD collection that he can't post and share with you. No, that uh, that's in a vault. That's that stays <laughs> locked. That one stays locked. Uh, I have other Impact merch too. The t- don't even get me started on the T-shirts and the programs and other shit. The DVDs are actually right in display, along with a couple action figures to signify my TNA Impact shelf. But. Uh, all right, man. I've said too much. I have said way too much. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm really you're putting myself out there. Yourself, there, man. Oh God, oh God. Uh, anyway, let's go back to uh, the show. We go from that here, and um, Mackenzie Mitchell interviews uh, Moose and Killer Cross. It was a great line in this one, Kyle. I think you know exactly the line I'm gonna. I'm thinking of that Moose said. When he referred to Eddie Edwards. You want to tell the people what that was? The thorn in his ass and a scratch in his Bentley. <laughs> I thought it was great. He's like, Eddie, you're a thorn in my ass. And I'm like, I just thought it was hilarious. I don't know why, but then it scratched his Bentley. That was a good line, too. Uh, good, you know, good stuff. I didn't like that Cross got had to share this interview. I'm like, dude, you're the main event. Like, you shouldn't be sharing the interview time. 
I didn't like. I mean, I, you know, they're a team. I know they're boys. They got each other's back. Oh no, no, no! This makes perfect sense. I'm, I'm attacking you for this, Trent. This makes perfect sense. A team is moving together backstage. Mackenzie Mitchell catches both of them, and both of them speak on their respected opponents of the night. What's wrong with that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like Cross should have been on his own getting ready for his match. Dude, it's a main event. It's his first title shot. Should be on his own somewhere focusing. Shouldn't be hanging out with Moose talking about thorns and asses. All right? Wolves travel in packs, Trent. That's true. Speaking of Wolves, I'm 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 really betting on uh, Davy Richards coming back in 2019. I'm just putting that out there right now. Uh, I don't know if I'm crazy, but... Trent prediction. Put that down. I'll write that one down. Trent's right. calling 2019. Davy Richards. I got a feeling he's got the itch again. I know he's a busy guy with his medical stuff, but I think he's got the itch. I'm just putting that out there. Eh, no, nobody they... stays away forever, Trent. You learn no. that about wrestling. Especially Davy Richards. The guy is too freaking good, man. Uh, I don't want I don't want him to stay away. I've been a huge fan of his. Anyway, side note. Uh, Scarlett Bordeaux backstage. Cam and Fala come up to her. And uh, she tells Cam and Fala, you guys have not earned my services after all these losses. And she's like, you you lost your title shot. Uh, you, haven't earned, you haven't earned me yet. And KM tells Fala to take off his clothes and dance. And uh, he's like, what? So he's, he, they start dancing. So Fala starts dancing. I thought it was great. Seeing Fala, you know me and KM and Fala. I got a soft spot for these guys. I love them. I think they're great. And uh, Scarlett reminds them that Impact's in Vegas last next week. And her talent surge will continue. And she says, go out and win something, boys, and maybe you'll get lucky. Follow then faints after that. Round to the couch. But faints. I, th- I think she touched his chest. I think that's probably what it was. But yeah, hey, listen. Scar Bordeaux, man. Hot commodity. Hot commodity. Kyle, I think you'd faint, too, if she touched you. What do you oh, think? I would pull a Don Callis. Yeah, <laughs> your water bottle will squirt all over the place. Is that what you're saying? Something like that. All right, cool. I, I just want to put out that I've given her a hug before. I kept it. In, I kept it tame, though. I get. I behaved when that happened. You didn't ask her for her bobs and vagina. No, no, didn't do that. Didn't do that in public. I, I see Trent shooting a DM at like two in the morning to Scarlet. Hey, hey, Scar. It's me, Trent from AAW. Bobs and vagina. Dot dot. Some, you know, somebody brought that. That came up at this past weekend's AAW show. Uh, I forgot who we were talking about, but uh, we said something. About what? About some creepy fans, and I go, yeah. Were they asking for, for Bob's? And uh, I said something. Were they asking for, uh, for Bob's? And the guy's like, Bob's and Vagine. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and I said, and the, one of the photographers, this kid Ian, he was like, Bob's and Vagine. I go, yeah, exactly. So uh, <laughs> maybe think even about funnier you. when it comes from the brown guy. Maybe think about you, man. Uh, it was cool. Trent, but, you're just reinstating stereotypes. I love stereotypes. Excellent. They exist for a reason, especially Excellent. my own. Especially my own brown stereotypes. I'll <laughs> I'll back all of them. I will back every single fucking one of them. Keeping your you packy brothers down. Yeah, listen, hey man, listen. They put themselves there. I'm only I'm only there to kick the rest of the dirt onto the <laughs> onto the grave, my friend. Oh, stop it, stop it! All right, let's move on here, Trent. <laughs> my mom is gonna kill me if she. Hears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, man. Uh, Moose and Eddie Edwards, dude, what a match. Kyle, this, this, they beat the piss out of each other in this match. I'm impressed. Moose, I think, gets better and better every week. Every week. What do you think, man? What do you think? I want your thoughts first. I'm going to jump in after you. Tell me what you thought of this match. Tell me now. Match of the year contender. Wow, really? I'm putting it in my top ten or top five, uh, you know, when we do that. Uh, this was a really good match. And uh, Moose and Eddie are two guys that, they're just the perfect dance partners. You know, it takes two to tango. This is a great match. They have such good chemistry with one another. And uh, I know that Moose is good because for a while, we, well, we saw Moose start out in Ring of Honor, and then we saw him jump to Impact where he progressed so much in Impact. Let's not, that's not a knock on Ring of Honor. It's where he was in his career. He started out very green in Ring of Honor. By the time he made his way to Impact, he was much more skilled, much more talented in the ring. We saw him slowly shift into this new character, Money Moose, call him, more of a heel. All these ridiculous outfits. He's so flashy and uh, flamboyant. Uh, 
amazing, dude. Such a good character. And I know that he's great because they make each other look great out there in the ring. It's like Eddie brings the best out of Moose, but Moose also brings the best out of Eddie. They are the perfect guys. And I, I hate to be one of those corny fans because I hate this and I hate this chant. But fight forever. Fight forever. Moose and wow. Eddie Edwards fight forever. I'm with that. Oh man. All right. All right. This is uh this is good. Yeah, that's I I think it was their best match to date, for sure. And uh it was so f- it was emotional. It was, it was very emotional. It was an emotional match. Yeah, dude. I thought it it, it told a great story. It was so back and forth. Uh again, this could have gone either way. I didn't know which way it was going. Like when Moose picked up the win uh with that spear. I was I was legit shocked. I was like, "Oh shit!" They caught me off guard with that. I didn't I didn't I didn't see it happening. I I didn't know where it was going. But it was uh, I mean, dude, there were he he did a go to hell from the top. There was blue thunder bombs by Eddie to Moose. Uh, bucket. Of, there was a bucket of beers. Somebody somebody took a bucket. Of, Eddie Edwards took a bucket of beers from a fan and smashed Moose over the head with it. Uh, hey man, if if I were that fan, I would want a refund. Beer is expensive. You know how much beer costs at shows? I was at the New York venue. You know how much beer costs? Yeah, you how much was the beer like there? Ten bucks a beer, Trent. That's a lot of money. If I if I were that fan, I would be pissed. I'm here for the wrestling match. Don't don't take my alcoholic beverages that I spent half my paycheck on. I agree. I mean, a bucket of beers. You're talking fifty bucks minimum. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping those are empty. Seriously. But uh, I love the part though, um, where Moose. Power bombs Eddie Edwards right onto the stage. Oh, like, I, I had that. Tried to kill him. He tried to kill him, Trent. I have. I had that in my notes. He gave him a razor's edge onto the stage, man. That was fucking ridiculous. That was ridiculous. And they really I, got me because he hits the power bomb onto the stage, and then when Eddie crawls back into the ring, Moose, Moose misses the first spear, and that's where they threw me off. Like. I thought for sure Moose had it in the bag, but then Eddie bounced out of the way and Moose missed the first spear, but then Moose did hit the second spear and that was it. But they they, they did such a good job, Moose and Eddie, of just keeping me on the edge of my seat. Uh, I didn't know. Well, it was perfect. This was a great match. I'm I'm fanboying over it. I'm marking out, but I'm I'm giving them their props, man. Moose versus Eddie Edwards on the November 8th edition of Impact Wrestling. One of the best, Ooh. one of the best matches of the year. Awesome. Uh, there was a cool line by Josh in this match during commentary when, uh, after Eddie hit him with that bucket, he kicked it, and Eddie he goes, Eddie, he kicked the bucket. I don't know why I popped for that when he said he kicked the bucket, but uh, <laughs> I think I heard, I even heard the two of them chuckle because it was just so like you had to say it. He kicked, he literally kicked the bucket. So uh, now some other funny things though uh, in there was um, th- during Moose's entrance. Uh, you heard Josh say that uh, Moose told him earlier that day that he's taking 25 grand cash with him to the Las Vegas tapings and he's going to make it rain. And then Don Callis jumps in with, uh, I had this he's line so cheap down. that he makes it hail with quarters. Yeah, I had that line written down too. I'm so cheap, I make it hail quarters. <laughs> and then another good one. Um, in the middle of the match, uh, if you recall, uh, Eddie is slapped Moose across the back with the ImpactWrestling.com ring post uh, magnet. Remember that? Oh, I missed that part. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, well they're, they're brawling, and uh, Eddie slaps Moose over the back with that magnet. You know the magnet they put on the ring post? This is Impact.com with the social media icons. Yeah. He slaps Moose over the back with that and throws it into the crowd. And uh, Josh said, uh, oh, that's a great souvenir for a fan here in New York. City and Don pipes in with, uh, well, I was planning on selling those later. <laughs> Don, Don Callis is a true, true worker, true wrestler. <laughs> Got his eyes on the eBay merch. Always, always be, always be merchandising. Uh, dude, yeah, crowd was super hot for the match too, which I like. The crowd was very, very into that match. Made it better. Uh, we go from that. We slow it down a little bit. We had to give people a breather, man. Uh, we go to Allie in the back. And she's, uh, you know, she's letting the darkness consume her. She's with Kira. And Jim Mitchell pops in out of nowhere again. Fucking Jim Mitchell's back, man. Uh, he promises that if she comes with him, he'll leave Allie and her friends alone forever. And out of, we, we blink, and then Sue Young is there right next to Jim. And she grabs Allie's hand from the undead realm, and she 
pulls her in. Allie looks back at Kira, and her eyes turn black. It's it, dude. It, the special effects are cool, man. I some people think they're cheesy. A lot of people like them. I like them. What What are your thoughts, loungers? What are your thoughts on these special effect things? You know, they've been doing with Allie, all the stuff with Rosemary, Undead Realm. Kyle, give me your thoughts. Loungers, also give me your thoughts on this one. But what do you think? Well, I loved it. I'm very invested in this whole Undead Realm thing. I really love what they've done with Allie. They've taken the sweet, innocent character, the most pure person on the Impact roster. When I think of characters and, like, you know, the intentions of each character and who they are and who they represent, Allie was always just that sweet girl next door. You know what I mean? So innocent and pure. And they've just, what they've done with her, the story they've told with Sue Young and Rosemary and the, the undead realm and just everything. It's been amazing. And I'm, I'm so into it. I think they do such a great job. However, I caught this firsthand. Uh, I had one of my buddies over that he's a very, very casual impact fan. Like he's been watching in and out since, like the mid 2000s. So, so he knows the company very well. He's not he's not he's not a rookie, but he just he doesn't watch as often as he should. And I had one of these undead realm segments on up on the TV and uh he just he was he did not know what was going on. So he he shit on it because he he was lost. He had no idea what was going on. So I I think uh maybe they need to update the viewers a little bit catch them up to speed on what the undead realm is and go out of their way to explain it to first time viewers because i'm really into it i'm in love with it but that's because i watch the show every week i had one of my friends over that likes the show but doesn't watch it every week and his first impression was totally awful and not everybody's first impression is going to be awful but it's just you know you got to note these things down he's he's a long time experienced wrestling fan he didn't know what he was walking into. So maybe they need to pull back a little and explain to you what the undead realm is and what's going on. It's good to get a reminder, especially when it's something so unconventional and weird. Good call on that. I like that. That's a good idea. Yeah, because, you know, they kind of just jumped into the undead realms. Like, what is it? Give us a little background on this. Uh, all right, man. So we go from that. Uh, doctor's checking on Eddie backstage. He tells Alicia and Eddie that Eddie likely has a concussion. Eddie says he's fine. He's fine. Alicia's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Basically, he drives her nuts. I think she gets off on it, though. I think she likes it. I think she she likes how crazy he drives her. And he drives her crazy. Uh, she can't help herself. That's that's a hell of a thing right there, Trent. Why is she still with this sick, crazy motherfucker? She gets off on it, man. He, that's you. it. She's a sicko. She's the real sicko. She's on some freaky deaky stuff. There's some weird stuff going on in that bedroom. I don't want to know what's going on, but it's insane because any other woman would walk out on her man. And it, I, you, it's not even about being loyal and like a love story. It's like, it gets to a point where it's like, that's a sick freak, a sick deranged freak. And you need to get away from him. Where are Alicia's people? Why, why, what kind of advisement is she getting? What's going on here? Why is she still with Eddie Edwards? She's only thinking with uh, she's thinking with the other head men. What can I say? She's think <laughs> Alicia. She's probably getting rid of the A game. We bring in the kendo stick into the bedroom. Who the hell knows what's going on over there in Boston? Dang. But hey, man, look, she loves him. She drives. He drives her crazy. She loves. Him. I've been. As I've dated several girls who drove me out of my fucking mind. But you know, it was something else that kept you hooked. And hey, we can all figure out that something else is. What can you say, man? All right, we go from that, man. Eli Drake. Eli Drake is out there with his lawyer, Joseph Park. And uh, he says he's retiring the Open Challenge, and he's officially in front of everybody, in front of God and man, filing a lawsuit against Impact Wrestling for being an unsafe work environment. He reflects on Bound for Glory when Abyss put him through the table, which is ironic because uh, Joseph Park, need I say more? And uh, Park gets on the mic and invites other members of the roster to join <laughs> join the lawsuit. Uh, to come out, but it turns out to be a scam. Drake hits Park with a low blow, hits him with a chair. I mean, basically, Eli's like, you're you're abyss. Fuck you. You know? And uh, and uh, the referees come out and check Drake's back. Drake heads back to the ring, and then he, oh, then he starts choking him out more. It was nuts. I do one, one little line out of this that made me laugh is when 
Joseph got into the, into the ring on the mic because uh, Eli Drake does, you know, Eli Drake. And I noticed that uh, Joseph Parks, like, we're filing a lawsuit against Impact Wrestling LLC. And I was like, I don't know why that made me laugh. It popped me. I think Joe, all Joe, Joseph Parks shit makes me laugh you know, regardless. But the way he I just did terrible, that. terrible, though, man, because I love Joseph Park. I have, I have a very I have a spot in my heart for Joseph Park. I love the character. He's a, such a fun guy. And just to see him get brutalized with that chair by Eli Drake, it was hurting me, man. I felt awful. That was one of those few times in wrestling where I just, you know, you wanted to help the guy. Yeah. He, he's, he's a great sympathetic character, man. You really feel for the guy. Get off Joseph. But, Leave him alone. I don't know where this goes from here, though, man. What do you do with Eli? I'm I'm puzzled with this Eli thing, man. I, I Eli needs to be main eventing or some shit. I don't know what the fuck's going on, man. I'm 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 lost here. I'm lost well, on Eli. I mean, there he keeps saying that he wants to kill uh, hardcore wrestling, basically. Like he keeps bringing up the tables, the chair, the garbage. You hear how he was on the mic saying like, "This is where it dies." It's like. I feel like we're going to do a thing where Eli Drake takes on Abyss in a Monsters Ball match. Like, oh, okay. I, I, that's one one thing you could do out of it. You know, Eli Drake, he's going he's gonna to force Joseph Park to bring out Abyss. And it's like, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's not bad. I just, I, obviously, we could see Eli Drake doing better things on the show. No doubt about it. I love Joseph Park. Uh, I don't know. I know the emphasis is on Eli Drake and hardcore wrestling. I don't know for sure if they're going to bring Abyss back. Are they going to bring back other hardcore legends? Are you going to bring in like a Jimmy Havoc or a young up and coming hardcore guy? Like, I don't know, but I definitely see Eli Drake involved in some sort of uh, hardcore match, Monsters Ball shenanigans in the near future. I could see it. I could see it. But I hope after that it's a climb up, man. Because, uh, I don't know. I feel like we need more TV time with Eli Drake. He needs a fair shake in this era, in this impact management era, man. So we'll see. Because uh, when he was getting his push, you know, it was the it was these guys just came in. It was still fresh. And they were still settling in and shedding the old skin of, of TNA Impact. And now with the new direction, I think, dude, Eli Drake could be your guy, man. I mean, this guy could be like the rock, dude. I'm I'm calling. I'm telling you. This guy been has saying the, that for so long and been saying that for years, years. He's got, he's got it, man. He's got everything it takes to be like their rock, but it's, you got to strap the rocket to his ass. That's it. That's the thing, dude. And, uh, they really fucked up their opportunity initially. Uh, I think that when he had the belt with Chris Adonis by his side, uh, they should have left him in that role. And I feel like, if they did it right, he would have transitioned into a baby face, just like yeah. The Rock did in the late 90s. And he has. The crowd The crowd yep. eats out of his palm and goes after all of his uh, his catchphrases, everything he says. The guy just totally controls the room when he's out there. Not every wrestler can do that. You know that, Trent. You're at so many live events working. Not every wrestler has that power to control the room. Eli Drake, he is the master of ceremonies. He can do yeah. that. And I agree. I, he's got the look. He's got the mic skills. I think he's good enough in the ring. He's not a super mega athlete, but he's definitely not a slouch by any means. Uh, but for some reason, they pushed him down the card and focused on other people. They went in another direction. But you always thought Eli Drake's got to make his way back up the card. He's got to make his way back into the main event. I think if they never push Eli Drake again back to the main event and he doesn't get the belt again, and he leaves after this run, you're not going to remember Eli Drake fondly. You're going to remember him as, oh, man, he, he could have. He, he was so close. Fuck that. Let's not let that happen. Let, let's push the guy and use him to his full potential where he can totally be an asset for the company because he looks like a superstar. 100%. I, I'm assuming there's a reason for this, and hopefully we can figure out what that reason is because – uh. I don't know, man. There's got to be something. Like, it's not like these guys don't know if the guy's a, a, a star, you know? So we'll see. Uh, but anyway, man, uh, we'll, we'll see where that ha- – maybe Vegas. Maybe Vegas is his thing, man. I mean, he, he f- seems like he'd fit right in. So that crowd seems like they'd love him. 
Uh, we go from that, man, to uh, Mackenzie catches up with uh, Johnny Impact backstage. And uh, Johnny says, you know, you know, Cross didn't have to jump him and leave his card to get a title shot. He's got a card, too, and it's called Starship Pain. Johnny Johnny is not a good promo guy. I'm I'm saying it now. I'm, I like Johnny as a guy. He seems like a nice dude. I met him a couple times at AW, but he's not a good promo, man. Uh, am I wrong? Loungers, am I wrong? You tell me, Kyle. Broadcast partner, am I wrong? You know what, Trent? Uh, fantastic athlete, mega athlete, freak oh, athlete. Some no of question. the stuff he can do in the ring, he's, uh, he's an acrobat. Uh, the guy is... All that and more. Uh, microphone uh, in this way, pushed this way as a baby face. A little cheesy. A little cheesy on the microphone. I think when he was... It doesn't uh, sound like he uh, believes it. No. When he was, before he had the belt, and he was kind of doing like funny stuff. He was being a little comedic. That's when I think he was actually shining. When he was like... He got to be a little jokey. I think that's where he's actually not bad, where he kind of can relax and be himself. I think that's who he really is. They got to put him in, in kind of a lighthearted mood. He's not a serious baby face. He's just not. He's, he's a very, very good athlete. I mean, mega, mega athlete. Uh, but I think he needs to be a lighthearted guy instead of a serious guy. He just doesn't have that serious look to him or serious style to him. And this is where I wish that I had watched lucha underground because i would love to know how they presented him to the audience yeah good good point i don't watch lucha underground i should but for context maybe we can brush up a little bit maybe look for some highlights before the oh, next oh, show oh, pause pause uh, we have the ultimate resource right here trent loungers if you oh, are yeah. a lucha underground fan i know a lot of you probably are tell us in the comments right now just explain to us in your words who johnny impact is as Johnny Mundo. Tell us about that character because we really know nothing about him. And maybe, just maybe, if we watched him in Lucha Underground, we would be perceiving him differently in his current role in Impact Wrestling. So, loungers, I'm, I'm giving you the task. Get in the comments right now and let us know about Johnny Mundo and Impact and uh, Lucha Underground if you're a Lucha Underground fan. If not, fuck it. All right, that fair enough. I'd like to hear from the loungers. Absolutely, you guys are our eyes and ears outside of the Impact Bubble. <laughs> Members of the uh, Impact Tribe. That's right. So yeah, man, we 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 talked about this match at the at the top of the show, but uh, just a couple of highlights here. Moose, you know, was was out there with uh, he came out with Killer Cross. He got up on the apron. The referee ended up ejecting him. Uh, after that, Impact hit a. Uh, Shining Wizard on Cross. Again, this was the first time Cross had a little vulnerability, which is interesting. Uh, Cross tried the Alabama Slam. Impact countered it, went to a power driver. Uh, swimming, swing neck breaker, but Cross kicked out at two. There was so much, like, Johnny had a... Like, you look like Johnny was a studied... You know, he studied Cross to know where the weaknesses were, where to get him. Uh, they beat the shit out of each other on the stage, back to the back to the ring and uh he hit the countdown to impact from the top rope close fall though didn't get it uh cross almost got that that cross jacket on but johnny you know he countered it hit the hurricanrana sarsha Payne won the match uh again like we said at the top of the show i didn't see it coming i, I was really hoping for cross to take it and run into uh vegas with it but hey i still Kind of get the impression that he's still on top. Maybe it was a fair, it was a clean, it was a clean loss though, Kyle. I mean, can you come back from a clean loss if you're if you're Killer Cross right now? What do you do? What do you think, Loungers? What do you think too? I mean, who beat him? The Impact World Champion. I, I don't think this makes Killer Cross look like a total chump. Uh, let's let's not <laughs> let's not lie about it. He definitely. Uh, we know that he's touchable. He's not untouchable. We've seen that. He is. We've seen him, you know, take a loss. Showed a little vulnerability there. Uh, I think that I'm still on board with Killer Cross 100%. I, I think, if anything, I'm intrigued to see how he comes back from this. How does he react to this next week? What is Killer Cross going to say in his promos? How is yep. he going to carry himself? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, yeah, so he took a loss. Let's see how he speaks about it because that's the thing with Killer Cross. He's great in the ring. He's fantastic in the ring. 
But so much of his character is the stuff that comes out of his mouth and the stuff that he says in promo. So I'm very intrigued to see how he handles the loss. Yeah, that's a good point. How how is he gonna address the loss? Is he gonna is he gonna acknowledge it? Is he gonna say it was a fluke? I mean, what does he do to kind of kind of throw off the attention of like you lost clean? How does he stay in the mix? So let's see. It'd be interesting. I mean, he's that's his hometown too, man. The guy is a he is now a native uh, Las Vegan, Las Vegan, Las Vegan. So are, are him and Moose <laughs> done? Since I don't, it was weird. Like Moose got ejected from the ring during this match, and uh, the way Don Callis said it, oh, yeah, the uh, Killer Cross doesn't need any friends. Like, you think uh, Killer Cross and Moose are still going to be cool come Vegas, or are we going to see a split at the very beginning, or maybe just quietly going their separate ways? I don't know. What are you thinking, Trent? I don't think it's a major split. I don't think there's anything to to argue about with these two. But uh, I think you can just slowly transition it out. I think that's about about where you can go with it. You know, there's not much else to really... I mean, what are they going to feud about? There's, nothing, there's no conflict. You know, to I feud thought it about. was very interesting in this match, though, how Killer Cross did the cross power bomb off the ramp into the ring while a match before that, Moose power bombs Eddie Edwards from the ring into the ramp. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we, I agree. Uh, Killer Cross and Moose must be training together, you know, running down uh, similar uh, strategies. I mean, they are they are their faction essentially. I mean, they they even had a third guy at one point, but uh, that's my next thing I want to bring up. Uh, I I, I want to wrap up the episode, obviously, but we have to talk about him, that other guy. Uh, End the episode here for us, Trent, and then we'll continue on, and I want to bring up his name, Double A. All right, all right. So, hey, first off, uh, so, yeah, Johnny wins, like we said. Uh, Kyle, you had a Dummy of the Week that took place during this match. Why don't you go ahead and call out that Dummy of the Week now? Dummy, 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 dummy. All right, Trent, well, the Dummy of the Week would have (laughs) to be the guy at the end of the match here. This, this pissed me off. Uh, I was going to get there in a second, but you, you you jumped ahead of me, so I'll give it to you. At the end of the match here, Trent, uh, somebody started chanting, we want Scarlet. We want Scarlet at the very end of the match here. And I couldn't believe it. It's like, you paid all this money, Dummy. Yeah. sat the whole show, and waited to the very end of the main event to be an asshole and s- start some of your pro wrestling stand-up comedy. We keep talking about this, Trent. I keep telling you about this. The goddamn stand-up comedians in the wrestling crowd. Dummy. I'm fucking yeah. sick of the bullshit. This guy is disrespecting Killer Cross. Dummy. He's yeah. disrespecting Johnny Impact. Dummy. He's yeah. disrespecting the Impact World Heavyweight Championship title. Dummy. Yeah. And I, always thinking about his Scarlet Bordeaux. Dummy. I yeah. think I know who this guy is because he was standing next to me during Bound for Glory at the same venue. And he was chanting the same thing. Dummy. Yeah. He chanted the same goddamn thing before the show started. I go, Gee. dummy. It's probably yeah. the same guy. It's probably the same exact guy, man. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. This guy in the crowd, he shows up to the show. He's chanting, "We want Scarlet." Now I'm thinking in my head, is he an Impact fan that really is just obsessed with Scarlet Bordeaux? Or is he just some guy that got dragged to the show by one of his buddies? And he just got drunk and saw a hot chick and just decided to cat call her the entire show. Dummy. I don't yeah. know what, but the guy is dummy of the week. He's got to be. Yeah, he seems like an idiot. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. Yeah. Def- definitely a dummy. Dummy. Yeah. Dummy, 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 dummy. Yeah. Anyway, all right, Kyle. What Great do you episode, want to talk, man. Final Great hour. Episode. Final Excellent. hour. Great way to leave New York, huh? I think it was a great way to go out. Great, great end of the show, man. It was uh, or end of the New York run. They really, I think they really left New York wanting some more, and uh, it, it's a, it turned out to be a good venue for them. I could see them coming back to Melrose for sure at some point. Uh, the crowd was there. The people came out, the, and the building looks cool. Some people I know complained about the uh, the, the the size of the ring. They they used a smaller ring, 
And because of the proximity of the venue, they had the camera shot was tight. You know, you couldn't get that front banner in it. Didn't bother me none. Didn't bother me on that hard cam at all, man. I was totally fine with it. Did not bother me one bit. Uh, but that's some people. Some people thought it was a little, a little small for them. But hey, I think it, I think it looked cool. Your thoughts? I like the little tight arena. Yeah. You know, I like uh, I like the way the Melrose Ballroom looked on camera. It reminded me of uh, a lot of those late '90s ECW shows that uh, also happened in Queens. Uh, I, I, I thought it was cool, man. Uh, I enjoyed this set of tapings a lot. Uh, sad to see the OGs go, but it's too early to speculate whether they really are leaving. And if they're leaving for the long term, you know, who knows? We might see them again. But all in all, I really enjoyed the New York tapings. Uh, this final hour was probably the, the prime episode out of the set, uh, in my opinion. I liked everything. Um, this episode, though, specifically... Great episode. I loved Johnny Impact versus Killer Cross, but I really loved Moose versus Eddie Edwards. That had to be my favorite match of the night. Uh, what about you, Trent? If you could pick a match from this final hour card, uh, give me a favorite. Fair. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with you too, man. I'm gonna go with that uh, that Moose Eddie. That was I think that was hot. Not not that I didn't like the main, but uh, Moose and Eddie. I think this was this was their best match of the feud, hands down. Loungers. Sound off. What was your favorite match? We want to know. Uh, right now in the comments, please let us know your favorite match and uh, be detailed about it. Don't be a stranger. You know, you, you can you can vent to us. You can, you can, you know, let it out. Talk to us. We want to know. What was your favorite match? Uh, why why did you like it so much? Uh, let us know the deets, people. Yeah. Give, give us your feedback, too, guys. We're, we're interested in what you think is, uh, you know, what you think is a match of the night and everything. But, yeah. All right, Kyle. Get to your uh, get to your comment. You you had something to say about the man who shall not be mentioned, but is going to be mentioned. Go I just well, I wanted to bring his name up in conversation. Is he gone? Is he come? What's going on? Nobody's talking about it. It all blew up, and then he just disappeared and just f- disappeared into the darkness. What well, the fuck is going on with Austin Aries? He's been he's been tweeting and Instagramming some hilarious shit. I don't know if you've seen this. He's been. He's been posting photos and quotes of people who were leaving shitty comments to him, like these overly angry Mark comments, like, I hate Austin Aries. He's such a dick. And I bet he drives a BMW to compensate for his little dick and shit like that. So he'll take the quote that he was tweeted and he'll find a terrible picture of these people and he'll place the quote over the photo of these people and posted out there of a terrible photo of him. like he did it to Jim Jim Cornette Vince Russo also and uh and a bunch of fans and uh he just posts that with no co- with the context of well, the hashtag just says Aries pissed me off that's it so if anybody's look look at the hashtag for Aries pissed me off and it's just it's it's kind of funny actually but that's all he's been posting uh, savage man. pure savage. savagery I just think like what that person thought of and I'm not talking about anybody in the wrestling industry, like not Vince Russo or Jim Cornette, but I think of like the fat loser neckbeard fan that insulted Austin Aries, like said something nasty to him or whatever it is on social media. And I just like think about that guy and like how shitty and bad he feels after Austin Aries just blast him publicly, puts his picture and his quote online for everybody to laugh at. It's like, wow. Yeah. You might make the wrong type of person want to, you know, hurt themselves. You know what I mean? Like, that is brutal. That is pure savagery. That's like BQ when he's in the Facebook comments on Impact's page, just knocking down the haters. That, that's a, oh, man, brutal. B, B, by the way, BQ was great at that. BQ's a sharp, sharp tongue son of a bitch, and he's, he's, uh, he's a sharpshooter. That, that's, that's, you know what? I gained a whole different level of respect for BQ. After I got to see what he can do on social media in the uh, comments, that oh. motherfucker kills people. Savage dude. Kills. Savage. Them. Kills. He, them. He, they never he, write back. They, they never, never do. Write back. They never do. I think they're too scared to respond because he's like, you. He, he already killed him. He. It was fatality, man. That was Somebody it. Somebody will comment something dumb like, "Oh, this is whack. Impact is gay," and then BQ comments, and he's just like, "Hey, buddy." Nice bald spot. Your wife doesn't love you. And these people, they don't write back. They just, that's it. 
I, I don't know. I, are they alive after that? Did, did they make it through that? I don't know. They just disappear. They got nothing to say. A lot of times, the best is when he, he attacks somebody, and then they delete their comment because they just feel so stupid and embarrassed. Oh, dude. It, I mean, like, the example you used is, like, tame compared to the shit he's... But, you know, he he's, like, not even a... He's smart. It's not like he's he's just making shit up. He'll like go no, to their profile. He's not and... a bully. He's not. That's the thing with no. BQ. He's not a bully. He attacks the people like that go out of their way to embarrass Impact. He embarrasses them. He flips it around and embarrasses them. He's not a bully. He doesn't attack people. It's the people that go out of their way thinking they're funny to shit on Impact Wrestling. Not not people that are just expressing their rightful opinion. I'm talking about the trolls. Yeah. BQ comes around and trolls them ten times harder, and it's it's fantastic. He's so. like the he's like the he's he's like. Out of, the, a, out of applause oh, for BQ. Oh, BQ. Woo. Give give him that that stern Russo like. Uh, give it to him. Give, give it to, to him, him, and then I'm gonna give him the top five. All right, but real quick, yeah, BQ. I I do love that he uh he uh um he's basically like impacts uh his very own their very own uh. Social justice warrior for Impact Wrestling, man. This awesome. dude is—he's out there just fucking fighting the good fight, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm not saying anything." He never says anything that's not true about these 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 trolls. He just goes into their profile, sees something that's about them, and says, "All right," uses it against them in a very intelligent way, and burns the shit out of them. And like you said, sometimes don't they step d- don't step in the ring if you don't want to get knocked out. That's right. That's goddamn right. All right, Kyle. We have we have, that is a show, everybody. Thank you for listening to that uh, for the episode. I mean, sorry, we're not done with the show yet. We got we got some more to talk about here. But uh, Kyle, what are you gonna hit him with, buddy? What do you got? I'm gonna list off the top five. Yeah. The top five. Yeah. I'm gonna give you the countdown, like Casey Casey, my rebuttal. Yeah. The top five. Yeah. The top five. This week's top five, Trent. I'm gonna leave it to you. Next week, next week, you come back with your top five. Oh, my great. top five this week. The top five improvements that Anthem has made since taking over Impact Wrestling. You ready for this, Trent? This is a good one, man. This is a good list. I I like this topic. All right, go. Top five improvements that Anthem has made since taking over the company. Number five, Trent. One night only. One night only has gotten a complete makeover, and it makes sense. It's not just shit stains on the underwear of Impact Wrestling anymore like it was for so long. And I'm sorry. Because I was one of those losers watching One Night Only every single month. The once-a-month pay-per-view where none of the storylines or anything that had to go on on the show would have any relevance to the weekly TV show at all. I bought every single one, so I have the right to say it. I could shit on them. I spent my money on them. I own every DVD of those. I got all of them. looking at them right now. I I bought you have the DVDs. That's weirder. That That's a whole world. But we'll get to that another time. That's a whole other <laughs> level of strange. But so they've they've taken the one night only format and the way they've brought it on the road and they're incorporating independent wrestling events and uh, just like cooperating as as one night only. All these indie guys are getting a tremendous opportunity. The way they're utilizing Twitch to their advantage. Twitch is another groundbreaking thing. I just think that they've taken something like. One night only that was very broken and they fixed it, in my opinion. Yes. So that's number five. The 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 remake, remodel, whatever you want to call it, of one night only, that is number five. Good. Good one. Number four. They've got the show out of Orlando and back on the road. Since Anthem has taken over, we are not stuck in Orlando in front of the same tourists. And shout out to, you know, like the heel team six guys and like the true impact fans that are always there that are actual fans there to see the wrestling. But you have to deal with all those tourists that just sit there yeah. drooling, literally drooling. Half of them probably need drool cups, mouths out of their mouth. Ma- uh, no idea what's going on. Don't know what they're watching. I have no idea who's who probably think they're at a WWE show, probably looking around thinking when's John Cena coming out. Finally got, finally got out of all that. No, no more Orlando. Anthem has taken Impact Wrestling on the road, Canada, Las Vegas, New York. I'm loving it. So that's got to be number four, getting out of Orlando and taking the show back on the road. All right, cool, cool. All right, good one. Number three, Trent. Number three, producing an edgy product every single week. 
I love that. Okay. For a long time, Impact would sometimes dabble in the, you know, here and there they would do things. The show never really felt uh, childish or family friendly like the WWE does so often in these past few years. Anthem, since taking over under the Don Callis, Scott Demore vision, Jimmy Jacobs, Sanjay Dutt, this whole entire team collective, this crew has been putting out a very edgy, mature product. It's not offensive. It's not like you can't put it on in front of kids, but it's it's impact after dark. You probably shouldn't. I love the edgy product. It's catering to the adults. It's something that has been missing from wrestling. We live in this this climate now. With the political climate and the landscape, nothing is really edgy anymore, Trent. People are very people are walking on eggshells in entertainment. Nobody wants to be edgy. Impact is showing balls. They're doing it. They're doing it right. And it's it's awesome, man. I've been really loving the edge the show's had week in, week out. So that's gotta be number three, producing an edgy product every week. Yeah, very good one. I like it. I like it. I'm behind it. Number two, better writing and storylines. From the promos to the presentation, everything. The way these stories have been... Okay, perfect example, Trent. The Undead Realm. That entire thing. The way they slowly wrote Ali's story out. The way Sue Young is intertwined into it. The way Rosemary is intertwined into it. The storytelling has just been on a whole new level. I, I, I think back to stuff they've done up until now. Now it's pretty much over. But the entire LAX saga, the way they brought in Kingston, the way they told the story, the way Kingston split the gangs up, uh, the the storytelling, the writing, there's been a lot of effort in the show that I just feel like wasn't <laughs> there in the past few years. Agreed. Totally agree. That's nothing it, against Dave Lagana and whoever was behind the show in the past. It's just there's a different love, a different uh, effort being put into the show in the current regime, and uh, all the fans seem to be taking notice. I think it's reflective of today's society and style, right? I mean, I think you could say that it's a little more, a little more spot on to what today is like. And number one, Trent, the top improvement that Imp- Anthem has made since taking over Impact Wrestling, the number one, they've given Don Callis and Scott Demore the ball. They've given the world Don Callis unleashed. They've got him on commentary. Oh, man, the show is great. The show is great. they finally given direction of the company the keys. Put it that way. Uncle Ed, he gave the keys to the vehicle to the right people. Finally. I like, I like that, Uncle Ed. <laughs> oh, you know, cause nothing against Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett's tremendous, but uh, it wasn't his time. When the GFW merger was happening, it, it was cool. But what we saw with Don Callis and Scott DeMore months later was just all that much cooler. It's a different, it's a completely different mindset. That Callis and DeMore think totally different than those, uh, than that other generation before that. I mean, that that generation of Jared, Pritchard, Cornette, you know, that that's an older generation. That that's a generation before these guys. These guys are a little more in tune with today. And I think it's a fresh, fresh mindset. These guys are still involved, you know, Demore running BCW and the school, Callis being involved in New Japan. There's a lot that these guys have their finger on the pulse of that the other regime didn't. So great, great list, Kyle. I, I oh, agree yeah. with so you. So summed up top five improvements that Anthem has made since taking over. Number five, one night only makeover. Number four, got the show out of Orlando and back on the road. Number three, producing edgy content every week. Number two, better writing and storylines. And number one, Don Callis and Scott Demore. That is your top five of the week, people. Huge, huge list, huge. All right, Kyle, great list, buddy. And uh, I think that is about it. We've kept these folks for a while. That was final hour from November 8th, 2018 from the Melrose Ballroom, the final show of the New York stretch. Onwards, we go to Vegas from Samstown uh, Casino. Kyle, you got anything else before I wrap these people up and let them go? Will you let these people get out of here already? All right, guys, thank you very much once again for joining us. 
on Total Nonstop Impact, Impact Talk for Impact fans, brought to you by the Impact Lounge. We will be back with you uh, next week for the show, the first show from Vegas. We're going to talk about that, break that down. We're going to see how things go, the new talent debut, and what's going on. We'll get right into that whole mix. Don't forget, guys, you can follow us on social media at We Talk Impact on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Just type in We Talk Impact. That's the Total Nonstop Impact uh, pages on all three of those major platforms. Look up Total Nonstop Impact on YouTube. Kyle's going to be putting some exclusive bonus content on there that we have. Uh, interact with us on Twitter, uh, I, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Interact with us. We want and and the U- and here on YouTube on on the Impact Lounge's YouTube video. Let us know what you guys think. Any comments you got, we will read them. We will respond. Anything you got. Also, don't forget. You can check us out on our feed at Total Nonstop Impact on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, TuneIn Radio, uh, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Now we're on Spotify. Kyle, we're a big deal. We're on Spotify now. So, uh, guys, follow us on all those. Rate, review, subscribe. Tell a friend. Tell an enemy. Tell a coworker. Tell your grandma. Just get the word out there for us. Tell them you love Kyle and Trent. Guys, that's about it for uh, for us. We're going to get back to you next week. Thanks again for listening to Total Nonstop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans brought to you by the Impact Lounge. See you guys. In my ass.